Hello everybody and welcome. Hot, hotter, um, hotfix? <laughs> While the world is burning up, the Kerbal Space Program 2 development team is putting the torch to even more bugs than those that were squashed with update 013, also called patch 3. After putting out Hotfix 0131 almost one week after patch 3, the team has released the second Hotfix just this week, and it includes a fix for one of the most annoying bugs that has plagued players since KSP2 went into early access. Trajectories being displayed incorrectly and then changing when a vehicle leaves the current sphere of influence of a planet. Basically, this prevented players from really planning any complex maneuvers for return missions or made it necessary to always adjust after changing spheres of influence. It made me personally over-engineer a lot of my builds and uh, was considered a game-breaker by most players. So let's load up the new version and try this out, shall we? For this I built a really simple vehicle utilizing two of the new parts introduced in patch 3, the Cornet and the Trumpet vacuum engines, which both extend their nozzles when activated. If you want to learn more about those, check out my video where I highlight patch 3 and all the changes it brings. One of the changes I forgot to talk about in that was something I asked for ever since KSP2 early access began. UI scaling. We can now change how much screen real estate the user interface eats up. It's a small feature in the grand scheme of things, but it does improve quality of life a little. So back to the mission. I just did a quick trip to Duna. Now that we are here, let's see what our trajectory prediction does when we want to get back to Kerbin. And well, it all appears to be in order. The projected trajectory is going the right way and it remains like that once I leave Duna's sphere of influence. Great! I managed to get a good encounter with Kerbin, the periapsis remained at 11 km when I crossed into the planet's sphere of influence and I also performed an aero brake maneuver, thanks to no thermal <laughs> system being in place yet. And then I crashed because I was too fast for the parachute to really open. Yeah. Oh well, but this was not a test of my flying prowess, but whether or not the fix really works, so I call this a success. And as you can tell from the reaction to Hotfix release 0132, players are really happy about this issue finally getting repaired. It does appear that the Hotfix summer, as creative director Nate Simpson called it in his latest blog entry, is in full swing. But that doesn't mean that we will now get guaranteed hotfixes every other week. I believe they are experimenting with doing these smaller releases instead of the big patches fixing hundreds of issues at once to see if their development pipeline is now stable enough to release more often without breaking stuff in the progress. Again! Fair warning, this is just speculation from my side based on my experience in the software industry. It might be that the new QA lead has introduced a few new process improvements and these smaller releases are a way to check if they work. In current days software development, the creed inspect and adapt is ubiquitous. It ranges from simple code snippets to large-scale organizational stuff. I could do an entire video essay about that, including excursions into the Deming cycle or the Japanese concept of Kaizen. Remember when the developers said they would change their release cycle to make them a bit longer? That was one instance where they had to adapt something, probably because they realized the original plan put too much stress on the team or increased some risk somewhere. We will never know for sure, because usually these internal proceedings are not communicated openly, which is not unusual in the software industry. Now they appear to have tuned their process again with these hotfix releases. It was prudent of them to not guarantee new micropatches every two or three weeks, because if it turned out that their process still caused too many regressions, and if we're being honest, any regression is already one too many, because it means you're breaking more stuff while trying to fix the original bug. After the less than stellar first early access version, the team really needs to avoid making things worse. 
A lot of goodwill has been lost, but the community at large still appears to be somewhat hopeful that the game will make a comeback over the coming months. And yes, since the initial early access release, Case P2 has made some important improvements, especially in regards to performance. It is hard to overstate how much smoother the game now runs since patch 3. Unfortunately, there are still some bugs in there that cause a lot of headaches. One is the orbital decay bug, where orbits inexplicably lose altitude. Yes, I know this is a thing in the real world, but it should not happen in Kerbal Space Program neither 1 nor 2. And even in the real world, it does not happen as fast as it does in the game. And then there's the problem with wobbly rockets. I mean, it is kind of a hallmark for the Kerbal Universe for rockets to be more unstable than they should be, but the way KSP2 behaves currently is still way too much. The developers are working on this though, so let's see what they come up with to mitigate that issue, and hopefully soon. Me personally, I'm hoping for some science features to arrive in the next months, because I miss my mystery goo. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel for more and follow me on my social thingies. The links are in the description. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.